I think it's been an excellent exercise in uh, raising the uh, awareness of uh, the communities which somehow uh, work on these issues, but not necessarily understand that there are different perspectives, different angles. Uh, don't, I think it was also very useful to deepen the understanding and the knowledge of, of the various communities that are associated one way or another with, with um, IEDs and countering the threat of IEDs. We have gone one step further here to say multidimensional complex, we need a multidimensional response, we need a collective response. How do we make that happen? We have already outlined the various avenues of action. This is already tremendous in a few days. Now we need to make sure that we capitalize on these statements, that the participants are taking that back to their capitals at the right level, and that it's followed by action, and that resources are attached to these actions by national governments and with the assistance of the others. But everybody needs to buy into it. Everybody has to show their commitment into action in dedicating the level of resources that is possible at uh, respective levels. It's a first step. Uh, now, uh, it was good to put together in the same room law enforcement and military from various countries. When they go back home, they have to maintain this dialogue. And uh, a dialogue takes place, in my view, when there is a common objective. This common objective is of vital interest for nations. That should be a good motivation for them to work together. But we must not forget that uh, the political, the police-military dialogue has to be complemented by the, the, the political side of the house, the diplomats uh, who ultimately give the foreign policy and, and uh, security orders to their communities, and, and which will be able to convey the position of a country and the strategy of a country. So I would say today in this room, we really have the three sides, 